Yes, Wednesday night here on the Big One BBC Radio One Extra. This is the home of brand new music with myself, DJ Target, but every other week. You should know it by now. Wednesday night is also the home of my in-depth interview. I've been sitting down with some real legends, some real UK stars. We've actually taken it international once or twice, but I like to sit down with some artists from the UK who have just got an interesting, incredible journey that often isn't shared, like maybe in bits and bobs here and there, but we like to just sit down and trace things all the way back. And tonight, I'm joined by an artist who's literally trailblazed her way for the last few years independently and put herself in a position that that is one to be celebrated, man. We've got to have a, I would say make some noise in the building because it's like, there's only like three of us here, so I won't bother doing that. But I will say, welcome to One Extra Little Sims. Hello. How are you, Sims? I'm well, I'm good. It, 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 right. it, it feels like, before we even get into it, it feels like I remember just like yesterday, mm-hmm. I was on Brick Lane with Roll Deep. I think it was like a launch party or a launch show for something that we were dropping. It was with G-Shock. And you were down there like oh, as yeah. a 16-year-old. Like mm-hmm. you, you may have even forgotten this by now, but <laughs> I remember you being down there and just remember like <clears throat> seeing you at one or two other venues around the same sort of time and just thinking, this young girl is like on it. Mm-hmm. And hearing you spit early on and thinking, yeah, you know what? She's got something. Yeah. And here we are today. Like, what is that? <laughs> we've got to be, what is that? What are we coming up to eight, ten uh, years later? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's been a mad journey. It's been a mad one. <laughs> it's been a mad one. <laughs> and I'm going to take it back to, to long before, you know, that moment I was just talking about, because I want to take it back, like I usually do with these in-depths, yeah. to the very beginning. I like to put it all the way out there, just for, for fans who maybe know you mm-hmm. from a certain point in your career, maybe have checked out, you know, you're at a show, at a festival, maybe bought an album or some of your mixtapes, but don't really know the full story, the full history. We try and cram it all in yeah. to an hour. So if we take it all the way back okay. to, to an early sim... Getting Ooh. about in, in, in North London. Yes. What was, what was life like growing up in Islington for you? Um, great. I wouldn't, you know, have it, have it, any, have it any other way. I think my, my upbringing has definitely moulded me into being the woman I am now. I grew up North London, like you said, Essex Road. Um, I went to Highbury Fields. Uh, went youth club in North London, St Mary's Youth Club, kind of where I think it all begun. Mm. Um I was definitely a performing arts kid. Anything within the creative field, whether it was uh, dance, acting, music, like anything within that field was mm. me. Was that you? Was that from being exposed to, to music and dance from, from an early age? Was that something you picked up as you were getting a bit older? Yeah, I just never really uh, consider myself much of an academic, I think. Mm. Um, it much was just, more of a creative. Yeah, for sure. Um and I was blessed enough to have a family that really encouraged that and, and pushed me to, to to get into dancing, to get into acting and all these things. Um, and I had that creative outlet from when I was young and kind of just like pursued it, I guess. Um, it just felt like I had no other... That was it for me. That you know, was, it was like, Yeah, for sure. That was the only outlet. Um and yeah, now we're here, 24, just turned 24. Jeez. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it, like, it, it's crazy to think that you could have went off in a number of directions. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, your dance, like you said, you, you yeah. were dancing from an early age. You were, yeah. you were doing drama classes uh-huh. from, from a and real early Yeah, age. and for the longest time, I thought I was going to be a dancer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was my, you know, that was me. I was going to I was gonna dance for I was going to be in these music videos. I was, you know what I'm saying, going to dance for artists. Um, was you like turning on TV and seeing like Janet Jackson videos or, think, or Michael Jackson and thinking, yeah, that's going to be me in a Do minute. you know what? It was more at the time Missy Elliott. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I've, I've given you like my era. <laughs> Back up. But, no, I did, I did used to see those videos for sure. But I just remember like seeing early Missy videos and mm. seeing uh, her having these, you know, kid dancers in them and thinking, oh, like, you know, I, I want to be, mm. you know. In, in those videos and, and dancing for artists like that um, until I think music kind of gripped me mm. by the collar and yeah. was like, nah, this is this As is it did it. With, with, with so many, you know, so many of us. Just, yeah. just, there's a certain point where music just kind of started to take over. For me, it was uh-huh. was like kind of like musical sport, musical sport, and then the music kind of Really? Just, what sport? Um, I used to do athletics for, for really? London. Yeah, I was I was like national high jump champion and all that. No yeah, way. English schools champion. Hey, I, you're I did, quite uh, tall, aren't you? Yeah, but you know what? The funniest thing is, um, sorry to go off on one, but I wasn't sorry? actually tall till I was in 
college, so I was like 17. I suddenly just grew like just had your four, or five inch, uh, four or five inches. Yeah, really? so I just had a mad bounce. I used to play basketball and I could dunk it. And like, I just used to have this mad spring. So I used to do high jump for the school, which went on to the borough, which went on to London. Then I'd join Blackheath Harriers. That Bruh. was all happening. And then I got to like 16, 17. Yeah. All the athletics meets were on a Saturday. Yeah. That was when my friends were going to look for chicks in the shopping centre <laughs> and going to like house parties. And uh-huh. it was, that just, like at the time, it was kind of, I got led off path, but right. little did I know, it would lead me to here. But um, right. yeah, at the time That's it was, I, I know about that kind of, when music just kind of mm-hmm, takes over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for you, when did music really kind of start edging it? Um, well, I started when I was nine. Um, but I think when I got to 14 was when it was like, cool this is i could see myself doing this for the rest of my life yeah i don't know how um i don't know what is going to happen for for you know or what it's going to take for me to to blow or yeah. you know what i'm saying make it but i just know that i love this and i enjoy this so much that i don't want to do anything else yeah. therefore i want this to be my career and um i think ever since that point that realization was like yeah let's get it yeah Sure. Going, man. Mm-hmm. We got, we got. I guess pay homage and salute uh, at least one of those early artists that that made you want to. I guess pick up a pen and a pad in the first place because right. a, a lot of people are into music. That they're, they're they're into listening to it. They're into yeah. to 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 sometimes being a DJ, or whatever. But what who who when it came to to writing mm-hmm. made you want to pick up a pad and a pen? Um, I definitely was influenced by Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, off the jump, like just i never knew um music could make you cry mm. or give you goosebumps just provoke those emotions yeah the, the and, other things didn't i, I mm-hmm. completely know you know what i mean until until i listened to lauren hill and was like wow like that's crazy that she can inflict that kind of emotion on me mm. you know um nas i remember um just riding around with my brother and he always used to play nas in the car like can never escape it um and f- from an early age i didn't understand the subject matter too much but i just knew this guy's hella smart mm. and like you know biggie smalls as well was another one jc i was introduced to these people a lot through my from my older siblings i'm the youngest of four mm. um and there's there was always music in my household so I, from an early age i was always put on to like the greats got, yeah. a, got a salute big bro for this man mm-hmm Bit of Nas. Yes. Little Sims is in for tonight's in depth. One mic. One time. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, all I need is one mic, one beat, one stage, one. If you're just checking in, it's Wednesday night. Tonight's in depth. It is all about Little Sims and she is live in the building. We just played an early inspiration for Little Sims, Nas. And one mic, you know, those, those lists of, of some of those rappers that you were introduced to early mm-hmm. um, by the older siblings and whatnot, that was a, a real strong list to kind of have a blueprint to draw from. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned For Biggie sure. Smalls, Jay Z was in there, Lauren Hill, yeah. and Nas. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're four of the all time greats. Uh-huh. And did, sure. was that, you know, we mentioned the moment where you just kind of decided, right, I, I, I just want to do music. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it's going to take me. I don't know where I'm going to end up. But I just mm-hmm. want to do music. Mm-hmm. Where did you go next? What did you happen? What happened next? Um, I started. Um, I saved. I saved my money. I saved uh, quite a bit, and I I bought equipment. Mm. Um, I what were you doing? Like a, a Saturday job? Was you just saving pocket money? No. So I got. I managed to land a, a acting role, an acting gig on E4's Youngers. Sick. Actually, first I done Spirit Warriors for CBBC. Um, don't go and check it out. <laughs> Get my skeletons out like, of the closet. Every single person listening right now <laughs> is going to go straight from this to that. So you just set that up nicely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I done that. I landed a little acting gig. And then um, I landed another one for E4's Youngers. And with that, I just invested in equipment. I 
bought myself a pair of speakers, a pair, a pair of KRKs. I got a nice little decent mic, bought myself a laptop, a little interface, just my so home you setup. you weren't playing because even though you mm -mm. said you, you wanted to make music, most people be like, yeah, I want to make music. Let me see where I can maybe yeah. get in the studio. Let yeah. me jump yeah. on a couple of times. You was like, yeah. you was heading to the, like, the studio store and trying to like really go in and set yourself up. I was, up. yeah. Because I was recording. I was recording at my local youth club. Mm. Um, I was recording songs at... Um, EC1 music project um, but because it was a, a youth centre and um, so many people were like so, so many young people wanted to get in the studio but it was just I couldn't really get in a you zone you needed more you wanted right. more time yeah in yeah basically and um, the hours were cool and stuff but I just felt like I needed that bit extra so I invested in myself I invested in my own equipment and then from there I think W was the starting point was mm. when I started learning how to make songs you know I was in my bedroom I had all the time in the world really I wasn't on anyone's clock apart from my own mm. um, so I so I took the time to to just get in a zone and, and work on me the artist um, made some really terrible songs made some really good songs um, uh, I guess challenged myself and pushing myself to try and sing um, taught myself how to play an instrument. I really just like developed myself. Yeah. Um, and then fast forward to to 18 is when I met my manager, Eddie. Um, and then it was like, yeah, go yeah. time. Yeah. Um, it, but it, before that, I had been doing shows here and there and, and around London and stuff. Um, but it wasn't until... I, I was about to mention that you know, like the, the likes of I Love Live mm -hmm. and yeah, those, I Love Live, Urban Development, development. Yeah, 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 and those that there was like a circuit uh -huh. in London of, of certain live shows where yeah. if you were an up, an up and coming artist, yeah, it was kind of necessary for you to pass through those particular shows just to, sure. just to gain that early for fan sure, base and sure. just to be on on people's radars. And I remember mm -hmm. your name popping up on on some of those 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 live nights as well, mm -hmm. man. I was just trying to be everywhere. I was yeah. just, you know. Um, it, it's important to be visible as as much as people i mean i don't feel like social media and these things were as mm. popular not, not at all man um so it was more about going to the live shows and seeing the artists live and um and those types of things so yeah i was just making sure if it was a i love live if it was an urban development whatever it was you know musicalized or whatever it was i was i was there mm. popping up you know yeah. Sick, and I feel like now would be a great time to play uh, some. I could have played one of many tracks because you you had a bunch of mixtapes. What is it like four mixtapes, five, six EPs before you even got that out? Looks crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> for people just catching on to Little Sims, like maybe you, you caught on on like first second album. Like if you mm. go back, you're gonna have to take a whole weekend out just to yeah. do the to, to, to do the music. history. It's a lot of music. I want to play. Leave it as that though. Oh my. <laughs> really? You're not feeling it? Of all the songs. Go on, let's tell me about it. Uh, I'm not mad at that, yeah. but it's just I did, I just definitely didn't expect that. Do you know, what? I was just listening to some of the older stuff earlier today, and and came across this, and I remember this track at the uh -huh. time, and it ju just took me back to that like a moment in time, and yeah. I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that tonight. <laughs> so if you don't have any actual objections, give them like a little mini of it. <laughs> nah, I don't. Nah, I don't have any objections. It's just like that one caught me off. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, go for it. We I'm caught her off it. guard. Little Sims is in in depth. She wasn't expecting that, Little Sims. <laughs> that is Leave It. Oh, I can't even say it now. <laughs> leave It as that. It as and it that. is Wednesday night tonight in depth. You you can really hear on that the, mm -hmm. the, the young still kind of finding her voice. For sure. Sims developing. For sure. But like I said, when we were just listened to it, that like at the time when you were you were doing that and dropping music um, and, and coming through the ranks, man, that, yeah. that was hard. That was... I, I, yeah, you. and and I wanted to play it because you can literally you can literally hear mm -hmm. the development between mm -hmm. then and now as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's crazy. It's very nostalgic. I remember like everything about that time. I remember what I used to dress like. I remember how like I just remember it so vividly. Mm. It's crazy that music can do that to you as well. You know, crazy. probably put you back in a in, in a, a certain time, yeah. time and place, man. Now. Sure. Uh, it, it, like I said, you you were dropping music mm -hmm. left, right, and centre. You had the home set up. Yeah, you, you'd been doing the live circuit. You you then met your manager, uh -huh. who you're still working with today. Bigger Eddie is outside the room right now. Yep. Um, 
And it was, you know, you you were getting support from mm-hmm. the likes of Hugh Stevens. Yeah. You know, Radio One were were, 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 were were on the emails and on the phones already. One extra, of course, support. And you were getting a lot of blog love. You were getting... Mm-hmm. Things were really starting to, to, to kind of fall into place. And then it was time for the debut album. Mm. Talk yeah. to me about that. Where was your head at when you when you started to sit down and, and, and write that music? Um, so I had just... Uh, so yeah, like you were saying, I was, I guess, uh, being sp- spoken about quite a bit. Um, and it just... I don't know, man. Something was just like, okay, it's go time. Like... I've done I feel like I've done a lot to to get people's attention mm. and like you know and now I just felt like let me really show them what I believe I'm capable of and that was making a strong debut body of work mm. um and so I recorded the album in 2014 um at Red Bull Studios uh, we made it within I don't know two two to three weeks, um, and then we put it out in September. If I'm was correct. that was that kind of like from from front to back? Did you already have concepts and ideas when you went into the studio, or did you just kind of turn up and start? And it was like from scratch. Um, I had been putting uh, like a small little folder together of beats that I liked that had producers had been sending me. Um, I remember I went to Berlin one time, I had a show in Berlin and I met with I Am Nobody and he played me the beat for Wings and I just remember like, like this is, this is the one. Like I just, there's something about just the instrumental alone was just like so touching. It was just emotional and it just... um, I don't know, spoke to me in a, in a way. And I think from from that point, that was like, um, that was the starting point, Wings, I think. Um, and then, yeah, got in got in at Red Bull in London and kind of kind of locked it down and uh, toured it. And uh, yeah, done done its thing. Yeah, it, it definitely done its thing. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it's a top 20 album. You, you received, you know, like I said, even more critical acclaim. You were winning awards. Mm-hmm. Through the independent album of the year, the AIM Awards the following year. You, yeah. were, you were first UK artist to, to go on to a, a US BET sci-fi. Mm-hmm. You were popping up and, and really starting to, to break down some doors. Mm-hmm. And not just in the UK as well, internationally. Yeah. And not only that, you had done the whole thing independently. Yeah. Like that, that self-sufficiency that had you going and buying mics and, <clears throat> excuse me, interfaces mm-hmm. and all of that stuff mm-hmm. a few years earlier I, I was the same drive I believe that, that has you know have mm-hmm. you still independent to this, to this day man yep yep and it's not um, I don't like I don't know man I just think it's persistence mm. and I just think when you're and con- and consistency as well you know what I'm saying I, I never stopped I never yeah. like took a break I never like I, ju- I was just consistent i just kept on kept on kept on even even after releasing the album i went on to do the ep in the same year mm. then i wanted to do stillness and wonderland the following year then i done an, another ep after like, that like, you, i just you, kept on you've literally not like you've been relentless the whole time <laughs> and, and we're going to talk about it in a little while but you, you you're about to drop even more music on us yes in, in 2018 but i think i've slowed down a little yeah. last last year 2017 i didn't really put out much music because um partly because i was touring a lot as well Mm. so i didn't i wasn't able to be stationary and work on um something but uh yeah enough of that yeah Yeah. (laughs) we'll we'll talk about your your live aspect because that's a huge part of of -hmm. of what makes up little sims as an artist Um, but i need to play the record we got to play the record how can we not play the record this was a massive this was like that that sync as well that that um the Apple sync that, mm-hmm. that that ended this 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 was this was all around the world, man. Yeah. That checks not too bad, I guess. So I bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's Little Sims Wing. She is in for tonight's In Depth, lifted from her debut album, A Curious Tale of Trials and Persons. Sims, how you doing? I'm good, man. Does it still feel nice to hear that record? I'm sure it does. Every time you hear yeah. that record, it must really like 
zone you into that that place, that moment where you mm -hmm. heard it and you, you knew this is right. We're building the album kind of around this. For sure. I think performing it is even more... Uh, really tugs on my heartstrings, mm. for sure. It's just... I don't know, there's something about saying those words. It's almost like I'm saying it again to myself and it just like, you know, I don't know, really mm. touches me, for sure. Now, we mentioned, you know, the... the the independent movement mm -hmm. that, that that you've been leading, been trailblazing throughout mm -hmm. your career. What was it that made you want to decide firstly to, to do things independently and, <clears> and secondly <throat> to remain independently? Because I'm sure across the, uh, all along your career, you've had yeah. different opportunities, different offers to work with labels and different situations. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you, you, you've, you've stuck to your guns and you're really running with this independent thing? Yeah. <sighs> she takes a deep <laughs> breath in preparation uh, of a lengthy answer. <laughs> um, no, nah, do, do, do you know what it is? I've just always um, felt like I'm not desperate for for anything. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm hungry, but I'm just not desperate. And um, the times I was being presented with deals um, that I, I wouldn't. You know have have been here mm. now you know what i'm saying had i've gone that route um i kind of so many artists do slip at that hurdle though. yeah you know like being able to avoid that temptation mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. or and it was very tempting very I'm, enticing i'm sure it looks lovely but um i'd have been f like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. i'd have been it wouldn't have been good mm. and i'm i was blessed enough as well to have people that um could shake me mm. and like you know don't because i'm human you know and, what i mean so and young like, yeah yeah like you're, you're 24 now and we're talking about like of course, your career of course, like an og do you know what i'm saying it's like it's crazy though like, especially because i've always you know I've, it's like this is my dream mm. you know what i'm saying and and to be able to say no it's um takes a lot of willpower yeah um and to go the long route and the harder route, um, it's, it's definitely not easy. But um, I'm blessed because I'm in a position now where I'm not against labels or anything like that. It's not, you know, and I know it's been misconstrued as in that is the case. And it's really not, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just haven't been presented with the right opportunity, which I felt uh, would have allowed me or enabled me to do to be my best self or to be the best artist I can be, not just in the UK, but like you said, internationally and globally. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, like I said, I was I was blessed enough to have like people that, you know, because as well, it's like, it feels like, oh damn, like when, when the going gets tough, like man, should I have just taken yeah. or should I have just, you know, but I have people to remind me like, nah, like you're good. You know what I'm saying? And if that time ever comes, you'll be in a much better position where you've got leverage and you've got all these things. And, and so, um, that's what I have now. I, exactly. <laughs> I think, I think it, it's so important and um, yeah. so commendable as well, because especially in the climate we're in now, yeah. um, in 2018, where young artists are coming through, they're making a one track, mm -hmm. they're getting thrown a contract in front of them, there's a check attached to it. Yeah. It's all looking rosy. Like, of course. it's so hard to, to, like you said, to be able to just block that out of and course. then navigate your way through what you've had to navigate your way through, which mm -hmm. has at times been very tough, I'm sure, challenging. Yeah. You know, feeling like you said, should I have made that other decision to join up with that big major and mm -hmm. use their machine? Or, for sure. like, I think it's really important for, for young artists to see artists like yourselves yeah. who have been able to, to, to really stick to their guns and, and yeah. make it work. And like you said, now you're sitting here with the leverage, with, yeah. with the, knowing the fact that if you walk into any of these buildings, yeah. it's, it has to be on your terms. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And like, that's uh, one thing I feel like we need to definitely shed more light on because some people don't have the knowledge. Mm. You know, some of these artists don't, not because, um, you know, they're not smart enough to know. It's just, it's, it's, it's a, business mm. and like um sometimes you know we don't look at that little gray area that's yeah. like you know um and that's and that was the other thing i, I felt like and I, I wanted my my it's like if you put me in a studio i know i'm going to deliver and i know like it's fine you know what i'm saying like you'll get what you want 
if you put me in a meeting, uh, I might just look at you like, I don't really understand what's going on. Yeah. And I didn't want that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I wanted to be able to walk in a meeting and know that, yeah, I know my stuff. It's same, exactly the same as when I go in the studio, you know what I'm saying? So no one can try to finagle me, like, yeah. it's not going <laughs> to happen. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of my... I, I, you know, you're, you're, it, it worked. Yeah. The, the 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 thought process, the headspace, and and all that you you had planned as 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 worked, man, and continues to work. But to, it hasn't. You know, this wasn't necessarily my plan. Mm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes life doesn't care about your plans. Mm. How in my head it was completely different, but I just managed to along the way craft my own path with it you know what i'm saying like i made my own route i didn't necessarily follow one um and yeah i guess it's led me i, to I this feel point. that's that's just as important even yeah. even even maybe more so important because getting knocked off of your plan sometimes yeah. is enough for people to say oh, i'm done for I don't sure know. I, I just oh didn't get sure. didn't get playlist uh -huh. oh, i'm done labels drop me i'm done yeah like, yeah yeah, so I, I'm just loving the fact that you're here and, and just putting that knowledge out there. Thank you. For for the people then. Yes. Um, <laughs> like we sp uh, we mentioned before, your your live aspect has been mm -hmm. a huge part of, of you creating that path and yeah. being able to engage with your supporters and fans around the world. And mm -hmm. I feel like your music as well is, it's almost like you create like your own soundscape Mm -hmm. Like the whole Wonderland thing, like everything mm -hmm. that you—it's kind of like you take people to the to another world. Yeah, and, and seeing that live is super important. Being able yeah. to to really translate that on a stage is really important. Sure. Favorite place that you performed? Uh, oof. On the planet. On the whole planet. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you, you pretty, you've been you you pretty much touched like every corner of it. Is there uh, anywhere you haven't been before we answer the first question? Uh, I've not been to. Hmm, I don't think she's, she's so. She's been everywhere, folks. I'd not in. Uh, yeah, I've been to a lot of places. You, you, I can't you, think right now. You have, yeah. and for for artists who another one for for for, for up and coming artists, you know, no artists, whatever, listening, mm -hmm. music fans, um, you being able to to carve that live path as well yeah. without the major label backing without sure. the big hit singles mm -hmm. that usually drive an artist's live mm -hmm. revenue or whatever you you managed to really like smartly put this all together how how did you even manage to to do that without the the big backing of a, of a major without the big tour supports and, yeah. and one that you kind of just built things from the ground up yeah um i think from from when i went over to the states quite early on in my career um I was able to, I got myself an agent over there that kind of just had me pop up at the right places mm -hmm. at the right time, um, doing little things like South by Southwest um, and just and just little bits like that would, that had opened me up to a different demographic, I think definitely helped. But even I remember going over for the, going over there for the first time and feeling like, damn, like no one's going to get me like, all the all the odds are against me i felt you know i'm i'm black i'm british i rap you know it's just it's just not gonna you know and as i i think continued to go over there and again be visible because you need to be seen mm. um i found they became a lot more receptive um but it also helps if you're actually good live. Not to like yeah, no, toot my own listen, home, it, but it, it can it can work both ways. You could have yeah. been put out there and like that could have been your first and only right. run of, exactly. of US shows, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You had to deliver. Yes, and and just knowing that, you know, I better come through, otherwise I might not come back to they might not book me again for South by. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm here now and um I'm gonna make it count. And I think I've just always had that mentality whenever going into new places. My idea, my my uh, uh, thesis or, you know, my thing is book again. You know what I'm saying? This is not the the first, I mean, sorry, this is not the last time I'm I'm, I'm going to be here. I'm, try, I'm coming here so I can come back yeah. and I can keep coming back. Um, and I think, yeah, that's definitely helped in going to places like Asia, Australia, um, the state, South Africa. I've been able. I've been blessed enough to go there one time and and make an impression to where I'm able to go back. Mm. So yeah, 
Okay, I'm gonna uh, jump back to my my earlier question. Do mm-hmm. you have a favorite place? Oh on yeah, the sorry, planet? that Where was. <laughs> I, I kind of took you away from it. Uh, everywhere that I've been. Oh, that's so generic, isn't it? You, was, you gonna say, do, was you going to do one yeah, of them? No, nah, I'm gonna not going to give you one. I'm not going to give I'm, you that. I'm sure I'll do the disclaimer for you. Okay. Like, you you love performing everywhere. You yes. love your all the supporters and fans are yes. the best everywhere in the world. Yes. All of the Little Sims fans are. Yes. To but, be clear. To uh-huh. be very, very clear. Mm-hmm. But there but, was that one time. <laughs> I've had extremely lit shows in Australia. Okay. Um. Yeah, extremely. Australia lit. seems to be a place that you know after the UK and, and home for for UK artists. It seems yeah. that when UK artists go to Australia, yeah, they 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 tend to have a really good time. Yeah, and I've seen sure. I've seen more recently. You know, like of Stormzy and Logan uh-huh. Graham guys doing Australia and it. It, it feels, yeah, I guess I guess it's like a bunch of English people who were sent there like yeah. hundreds of years ago. So they're yeah. kind of like our people already. Yeah, of I course. Guess. And I think because they are so far away and probably feel um, a bit in isolation from everything that's mm. going on in the world. It's that appreciation mm. of like you've really, damn, you've really turned up. Here. Yeah, like you got on a plane and flew twenty six out, or how you know what I'm saying to come and play your music for us and for that I'm going to give you 110% energy yeah. you know what I mean regardless um, but in saying that as well I think home doing shows home mm. is it always touches me yeah. um, because it's where it all started so to come back and you know what I'm saying especially for here. someone like you who does travel so much yeah when you do get to come and perform back in, in London or in the UK it must yeah, feel man. like extra special just to be back amongst like you said, the place where for we're sure, fighting. for sure, and just little things that like um, you that London just get yeah. like a wheel up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> Don't have you to just, it. yeah, like, like you just, just you just, just, just know what no that one's means. Looking around, like <laughs> what's wrong? What's like people literally, panicking? Yeah, literally, literally, like, it's a good old fashioned <laughs> yeah, wheel up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just just little things like that to, that just make you feel like yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think we should play some more music. We're, we're just narrowing sure. on. This it's a it's a great story. That's why though, because uh, Little Sims is in for tonight. It's in depth. Let's talk second album. After we play this, picture perfect from the second album. Stillness in Wonderland. From the second album from Little Sims, that is Picture Perfect and she is in for tonight's In Depth and we're just like, we're just going in, just just breaking it all the way down, man. If you're just checking in, uh, this has been a real knowledgeable one and we're not even done yet because we're only up to like your second album. Mm-hmm. Stillness in Wonderland, you are yes. wasting no time off of the back of a curious tale of trials and persons. There you go. Got it out in one go. <laughs> <laughs> you are wasting no time straight back at us in 2016 with that. Yeah, yeah. But what's uh, the thought pro- like... I guess the thought process was as it had been, just Mm -hmm. I was going to keep hitting them. Yeah, for sure. Um, I had, so I'd done the first album and I toured and then I continued touring because I was, um, I went on to support Madison Park. I went on to support Lauren Hill. um, Which must have been crazy. Like, I know you're just kind of brushing past the names there, but like Lauren (laughs) Hill was like, like you said, early, early inspiration. So Uh to be able to, to be able to support, mm-hmm. you know, I guess one of your your early heroes. Yes. It, it must have been like a crazy moment for, for you. For sure, for sure, definitely. And even just, um, uh, th- there were a few times where I just watched her soundcheck mm. just because, yeah, you just know what I mean? All, like, yeah, wow, for sure. And just seeing how she conduct the band and how she moves and just how she is as an, as an artist mm. and she really knows her stuff. It was just so inspiring to see. Um, so I'd done all these tours and then it was like, okay, new music time. But again, I haven't been stationary anywhere for me to knuckle down and work on a record. So I was just writing on the go. I was writing on planes. I was writing in the back of Ubers. I was writing in my dressing room. I'd, wherever I could, you know what I'm saying, yeah. get a piece of, bit, bit of peace of quiet. I was just writing, writing, writing. Um, and producers were sending me beats. I worked uh, heavily with a producer called Astronaut from France. Um, and I had got back to London, went back into Red Bull, had all these demos and just kind of 
finished it off. Mm. Um, and it was basically, I guess, the story of my <laughs> my tour experience, how it felt like I was almost in a wonderland. Mm. I was, you know, meeting so many people and, and found myself in so many different rooms that I never thought I'd be in. Um, and it was just all very fresh and very new to me and I didn't know if if it was like something I liked or something I didn't. I, I just didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I was figuring it out. So that album was almost like uh, you was giving yourself therapy after like yeah. the, the crazy world sure. touring experience that you've been yes, through. Yes, yes, exactly that, exactly that. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, well, I hope it came across well, but I'd, more than anything, I wanted this record or that record to feel um very vi like you're having a visual experience mm. as well as like just audio you know yeah. what i'm saying i wanted people to listen to it and feel like they can feel themselves being immersed in wonderlands with the interludes with yeah. the soundscapes and just just um making it feel like oh i'm really here yeah like, you de and even like as the album's ending you're like i'm ready to leave wonderland now it's yeah. like like because I, I i don't know if you've been or if you, even if you're a fan of Alice in Wonderland, but mm -hmm. there's like an interactive Alice in Wonderland theatre show that they do in um, a place called The Vaults in Waterloo, and you go and you're actually oh, wow. you actually in you're actually put into the story, so you oh, go no around way. different rooms. And Have I got, not heard of that? Yeah, like it's crazy. I, I, Is know, it still on? It, it comes on and off, so okay. yeah, you'd have to double check. But um, literally, like as I was listening to that last track on the album, like yeah. you're getting ready to leave, it's like yeah, 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 yeah. it took me back to there and like just, yeah, like you said, just visualizing uh -huh. everything and uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it comes across. It comes across perfectly I'm in, glad. On, on the album. Thank you. And, yeah. and you did say you're ready to leave Wonderland now, ready to yeah. come back to real life. Yes, which was was home, I guess. Yeah, and um, I feel like I just missed a lot. Mm. You know, I missed time with I mean it, I understand it's work and it's is what I signed up for essentially but I missed my family I miss spending time with my friends I missed things that were happening in people that I truly cared for's mm. lives and it's like what are the important things in life you know yeah. if like your nephew just lost his two front teeth and like you know what I'm saying you wasn't here to witness that yeah. or just I don't know just yeah, little yeah. things that like at least I care about yeah. um so yeah I think we should play another track from it alongside one of my favourite artists as well of recent years, Sid. Alongside Little Sim, this is Shotgun. Uh, okay. <laughs> Little Sims alongside Sid. That is Shotgun tonight's in depth, and we are just breaking it all down, man. Second album, again, just like critical acclaim, uh, another bunch of of massive cosigns as well. You gaining mm -hmm. fans of of you know regular walks of life all the way through to some of your favorite all time artists, like mm -hmm. performing with the likes of Gold Link and Andre Three Thousand comes to the show and mm -hmm. Kendrick's on on this actual station saying mm -hmm. when he's asked about who he's feeling mm -hmm. says you're the illest doing it right now. Like, how does it mm -hmm. feel when? all of these contemporaries and all these peers of yours yeah. are, are really noticing what you're doing and, and, and giving you these 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 accolades if you yeah. like yeah um it obviously feels great yeah. you know what i'm saying it's, it's it feels like i'm doing something right um for those people to even know of my existence you know what i mean um but more than anything i think it's humbling and it's just more fire in my belly mm. to like don't get complacent yeah. don't you know what i'm saying this is just like yeah cool they you know know you're you're doing your thing but um it's easy to let that stuff phase mm. you i think um and if i ever lose sight it's it's not going to be good for anyone so i just like <laughs> plus the, eddie and the team will grab you and shake you like exactly they, that. like they have been <laughs> um we, we spoke about you performing live and and you know how much you love that and yeah. performing at festivals performing at clubs all around the world mm -hmm. so much so that you decided to take it upon yourself to, to have your own festival yes which is not what a, a, an artist does every day mm -hmm. how did it come about and what what was your thought process behind that because that just just the the, the idea of putting on a festival just sounds like a like a bunch of headache <laughs> first and foremost Definitely. just putting on like my nights yes. stuff, which i've actually forgot to mention you actually headlined yeah. the, fir no, but the first ever one was that the first that was ever the first one ever pitched up crazy had, yeah. so that that was like I think it was December 2013. That's crazy. Yeah. That's it, nuts. It's time is flying. But anyway, 
back to the festival thing. Yeah. I, just just from running the night, I know just getting it's lineups and and that was a, a little small thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so excuse me, running a festival of your mm-hmm. own. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Ooh, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, but you know, to be honest, I have to give this one to to my team mm. because um, I'm like. I'm I'm very much involved, but at the same time, I'm a creative. Therefore, I go ghost at times, which is like, (laughs) you know, not for no one to take personally. I'm just, you know, I get in my own. Mm. So again, I've been blessed enough to to have people that have worked so hard in order to make this Mm. um, a reality. This is uh, Roundhouse is a place that I've been going to since I was in college. You know what I'm saying? Just using, again, one of the places I was using their facilities, getting a little studio here and there, and then to come back years later. I was doing a few a few of their shows for the Roundhouse Rising Festival in, like, the smaller space. Yeah. Um, and then they asked me to do a festival. Crazy. And I was like, sure. <laughs> Welcome to Wonderland. Yeah. Was born. Yes. How, how do you decide who you want the lineups? Is it kind of like you just really get to indulge in, like, just some of your favourite stuff or, or like yeah. you said do you kind of put your ideas forward and let the yeah. team kind of just put it together yeah exactly that um, I'm you know I present them with with people that I would love to to have in a lineup, and it's always a bunch of names that I just throw and um, obviously people have schedules mm. and availability and all that stuff but this year we was blessed enough to have a bunch of people that I'm just fans of in general. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think that's why, why, what kind of English is that? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm most excited because I get to uh, be a fan yeah. for the day as well, you know? And like, you know, Ezra Collective, Rhapsody, um, who else we got? We've got OCG, there's Cleo Soul, there's so, so many people that I'm, you know, that are in my phone that I mm. listen to, you know what I'm saying? And I get to see them perform at my festival. Mm. Um, which is, is still a trip, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, Crazy. Yeah, it is for sure. Definitely. And that is it's coming around soon, year two. Yes, year two. Last year was tight. Last year was super fun. Um, but, th- but this year, I think we've definitely upped the level. So as well as um, the before, we got three stages uh, and then we got Marketplace, which is uh, you can buy stuff. People will be selling their merch. Um, we have an art gallery, we have there'll be food there'll be everything is gonna be jam-packed in it's one a real day cultural yeah 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 it's um, gonna be fun more what's than the date, anything what's the date of it again this year uh sunday the 4th of march that's 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 this week yeah that's this week yep i need to days. come down yes you do i need to come down for I'm, sure listen I mean, it's just a sunday <laughs> i need to write down a date yeah. it's this sunday so um it starts at one and um yeah all day. All day ting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come down. I missed last year's as well, man. I heard it was a load of fun. Yeah, it was for sure. Like, we're, we're, we're I wouldn't say we're running out of time, but we kind of are. But there's so much to really? talk about. <clears throat> I know, that's what I was thinking. We've still got a little bit, but <laughs> this, this could at least easily have been like two, three hours, it feels sure. like. So much to talk about. I um, want to bring things kind of, well, we are up to date talking about the, the, the Welcome to Wonderland Festival, but more recently, most recent tour that you've been on. Yeah. Supporting Gorillas. Yeah. How crazy was that? Because for someone who's Insane. already been around the world, mm-hmm. performed, headlined your own shows, performed at festivals in the UK and internationally, yeah. joining up with an act, mm-hmm. you know, the, the size of gorillas, and mm-hmm. they don't tour that often. Mm-hmm. So to be able to, to to go around the world and do that must have been a must have been a buzz as well. It was a madness. <laughs> um, nah, that was definitely one of the highlights of my career, if not my life, mm. for sure. Um, Gorillas have been super supportive of everything I've been doing. Um, from being first introduced to them through Kano. Mm. Kano was Kano was the link mm. in all of the this. Plug. Yes, for <laughs> sure. Um, and again, that is someone that has always had my back. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. On a low. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't hasn't got to be out there about it. Just you know what I'm saying? He's just got me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Kano's like of course a legend and to know I have someone like that in my corner as well blessing but um, yeah I met uh, Damon through Kano Uh, we chopped it up we got in the studio we made Garage Palace and then I played Demon Days Festival in Margate last summer 
um, we played Garage Palace for the first time and it just went off. Like, I don't think anyone's expect. I definitely wasn't yeah. expecting that. <laughs> um, and then they had toured the States. They were touring the States and I just so happened to be out there at the same time. So timing was perfect. We linked there, um, played more shows with them out there and then got offered to do the Europe tour. And Crazy. it was like, yeah. It's crazy like, madness yeah, and, and, and just to just to put the icing on the cake just last week mm -hmm. joining the guys on stage at the brits as yeah, well which yeah. felt like felt like it was our brits this year i don't yeah. know like yeah, just felt like the sure. culture really just had its impact properly for sure, this year for sure for sure and that as well you know like it's not my award do you mm. know what i'm saying they won that award yeah, but yeah. it just goes to show the humility of the guys and how um much they've embraced me you know what i'm saying mm. um they didn't have to do that but it was it was like they, they've allowed me to to share these moments with mm. them in which i'm always grateful and that they're just blessed man yeah. like they're just cool and yeah, they're you got funny big up damon Albar. yes damon's such a ledge like such a g yeah man Big up Damon all right. We have to play the record, man. Gorillas alongside my special guest, Lil Sims, Garage Palace. Oh, palace flows, rain falls from the heavens to my palace rooftop. When the light shines through it, I feel Gorillas alongside Lil Sims, that is Garage Palace. Do you know what? Like, to be fair, I think we should have expected that to go off a little bit more than, than everyone did at those festivals, you know? You, we should have. Yeah, it, I, I feel like, really? yeah, it's a banger. It is. It's like, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely a banger. Yeah. Uh, so, Lil Sims is in the building. If you've uh, just tuned in, you're going to have to go online, check it out on the iPlayer. We spoke about a lot tonight, but we're not done because you've got a third you album. You said we're not dumb. We're not dumb or done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said we're not done. Okay, but we're cool. also not dumb. <laughs> well, Sims, Sims definitely ain't dumb. Um, third album on the way. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you, you said, you know, during... The, the the making creating of stillness in wonderland mm -hmm. you were kind of on the road writing wherever you got some peace and quiet this mm -hmm. time did you get to kind of really like just lock away because i feel yes, like this time you were like answer. i feel like this time you were like this time i'm uh -huh. doing it i'm locking away uh -huh. phone the agent nope yeah not doing it can't do that Legit. show da -da -da -da. Yeah. like and that was it yeah yeah i'd dished out a load of noise <laughs> um but i'm so glad i did yeah. because I was I made an album that I'm it's just proud of yeah. more than anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Again, last year didn't get to release much of my own music um due to touring. And so when I locked in and made this record, I'm got in with a producer called Inflow. Um and we just kinda it just felt like a cleanse, mm. you know what I'm saying? Everything I've been dealing with for the past 12 months in my personal life, um, in my work life, it was just like... Just, just purge. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. Um, so, yeah, more than anything, I feel like um, it's just a new uh, introduction, I guess. Mm. Um, we we was having this uh, conversation in Studio Flow and I, where we were saying when we, when you when you do music your whole life, where do you draw from? Mm. Um, I've been doing it since I was nine. I only have twenty four years worth of experience. Um, what else can I pull from to mm. where people are like, oh, I've heard her say that, or I've heard, you know, and that was difficult. And what it was is tapping into places that I myself I'm scared to tap into. Mm. Um, and it's a lot. It's have scary you had to that be on, vulnerable. On your previous bodies of work, have you for kind sure. of wanted to touch on things and thought, you know what, let me yeah. just leave that of over course. there for now? Of course. As as honest as um, my bodies of work prior to this record have been, there's definitely be, been still subjects that I've been hesitant mm. to talk about because it's scary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it's scary to put your business out on record and. and then go and do interviews and be asked about yeah. it. You know what I mean? And then go and perform the track right. to people all around the world. Of course. And especially if, um, you know, you're not over certain things and you go and perform it, it's like opening up mm. a wound. Um, and I don't think I was mature enough to do that. Mm. Um, I think with this record, I've definitely um, matured a lot more into where I've pushed myself uh, and really allowed myself to tap into places that 
um, I haven't before. Mm. And so that's why I think, that's why I'm proud of the record. You know what I'm saying? Not not because the beats are sick or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the beats are cold. Yeah, but this is like, this, is stuff, this, is, stuff, that. this is stuff you was, you was doing that yeah. stuff like years ago. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You've like, you're, like you said, you're in a place now where how do you up the level each time? Yeah, how yeah. do you continue to like, sure. have new things to say and new sure. things to talk about? And again, and, and, that, and that was with who I was working with as well. Flo, he definitely pushed me to where there was times I leave I'm not gonna lie I left the studio crying mm. because it was too much like I didn't like that I was being that raw mm. you know what I'm saying and that was scary Just to me Just a new place for you in, Yeah like, for, for sure head, yeah. for sure and you know this studio is 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 like your your bathroom is it's, it's a space that's personal it's a space where you can be your honest most truest self you can be vulnerable you can be all these things you can make mistakes and um I, I, that's what I feel like I took from this experience mm. the most, just not being afraid of the studio. Um, again, I've grown up making music in my bedroom, you know what I'm saying? So when you put me in a room where there's like massive speakers on the wall and there's, you know, all these and there's an assistant coming in, getting in, what you, it's like the pressure of now yeah. <clears throat> having to make good music is on, mm. you know what I mean? Um, but I was, again, blessed enough to work with someone that allowed me to make mistakes and allowed me to, like, not come in for the day if I was, like, if it was yeah. getting too much. And just, you know what I'm saying? It was, yeah, it was a, a really intense but great experience mm. for sure. For we, sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Have you got a title? Is, it, is, it, is there a date? Um, nah, actually, there isn't. But definitely this year... Yeah. Uh, I've not got a name for it, but I feel like with those things, it will just come. Mm. I didn't have a name for Stillness and Wonderland until I like kind of finished the album almost. Mm. Um, so I'm not, yeah. It's bugging me now. It's <laughs> I've, like... just, I've just triggered it. So you're like, your brain just going right. Yeah. You'll probably be in like in the car on the way from here and it'll be like bang. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those, those things will come. European sure. tour on the way as well this year? Yes, May. May we tour Europe. This is like um I think the last time we tour Stillness and Wonderland. Mm. Unless we do some like um like as what, what did Izzy do the other day? We oh, done like boy in the corner, corner like, like, like ten yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless we so do that got, later. Twenty twenty six. If I'm that much of a legend. <laughs> um, no, this is you you definitely will be. Hundred uh, percent. Um <clears throat> but yeah, so this is kinda like uh rap rap mm. rapping that chapter yeah. up the Poison Ivy tour yeah. getting ready for the, the third album I'm sure you'll be mm-hmm. you know plenty of touring with that to come now I, I found out very recently as well that you were almost gonna be or almost were mm-hmm. on our screens in, in a movie that the whole world is talking about at the moment yeah like yeah. you actually auditioned for a part mm-hmm. in Black Panther yeah which part was it uh Shuri Wow. Uh, yeah, L- L- Letitia Wright. She, she bagged it a win. Still sick. Yeah, sick. So how, how does that how does that even go? Like how does <laughs> auditioning for like a Marvel movie even happen? I know obviously you've had your you've got your your acting lane is still there, still open, uh-huh. still active. You haven't closed it and nah, said I'm done. You're, not you're, at you're all. still at it. But how does mm-hmm. how does that happen? Um, as in like the process do you get a call from somewhere someone yeah um, I have an agent in uh, over here and in the states and um, I just got put up for yeah. it like yeah I got sent I got sent uh, the size uh, part of the script um, I auditioned for it at the time I was in South Africa um, and it didn't go my way but Letitia got it which mm. for me is still a win young black woman from from London, you know what I'm saying? That that bag that role and she's now doing amazing things. That's a win for, yeah. for, for me and for, for many other girls that look just like me. Course, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Um, and at the same time, uh, while they was filming that, I got the Gorillaz gig. So it's kind of, everything happens for a exactly. reason. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, do you have any any acting projects that we should be looking out for? You, you kind of, at the moment, I guess you're just yeah. literally been focused on this album and, and yeah. now looking at getting out. Do you have some stuff yeah. in the pipeline as well? Um yeah, I've been I've been meeting with casting directors, um directors, writers, I've I've been meeting with them all. Um and yeah. 
<laughs> that's all she's saying yeah. for now. <laughs> we'll have to keep our eyes and our ears peeled. Uh, let's end on the record. We're going to let you pick the final record. Cool. Uh, a favourite of one of your own, I think we'll go with. All right. Um, Which there's so many you could choose from because, yeah. like we said, the catalogue is mad strong. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, the, I'd say probably the most recent, I guess, of of my own, which is Good For What, I believe. Um, yeah, Good For What, good, produced by Astro. Can I say as well, Good For What is, I think, is my probably... If not one of like my actual favorite of yours, ah, oh, literally like, thank you. Love the record, like rinsed it, thank you. Like ridiculously, the visuals sick as well. Thank you very much. So that's a perfect ending. Little Sims, thank you for passing through. Thanks, Target man. Love, mate, do this again, again, hundred percent, again, 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 again like, sometimes. Hundred <laughs> percent, like the way you work, we'll yeah. have to, we'll have to have another in depth in like <laughs> a year or something because nah. you do so much. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, sooner rather than later, man. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Little for Sims, sure. big up. Yes.